Alliances turn to ban. Radiant team ban. Welcome back guys! Uh, second series of the night, Team Alternate up against the Lions. I'm Durka, once again in the JD Studios and we should be ready to get straight into this. Draft has begun and both teams are ready to get into the uh, into the thick of things as I close that little window up there. But yeah, showing off my co-caster, Clairvoyance. Welcome, welcome, how you doing? Radiant Team Pick. Alliances turn to pick. Yeah. Queen of Pain. Alliances. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I started watching them a while back, and I kept thinking they were like. They were very similar to what Vega used to do. You know, they loved their tiny wisp. They had a few pocket strats here and there, and they seemed very strong. The roster has been together for quite some time as well. You know, they're all uh, a full Polish squad. But they haven't really flourished as Vega have. You know, Vega obviously changing a few players in and out, and bringing in Solo and Mag, and really uh, building up their sort of star-studded lineup. Team Alternate, they they need that one push. You know, they need that one big sort of tournament win or something like that to show that they, they do have the skills behind the drafts that they've got. Up against Alliance, you know, in in the defense, maybe this is their time to shine. Maybe this is where I'll show uh, show what they're made of. But Alliance start things off with the Wisp, Radiant Queen of Pain. Team. So they've got Arcade's Hero as well as S4s, while Alternate, Undying plus Tusk. And I love the fact that Alliance, they've done their homework on this one. First phase ban, Shadow Fiend and Bane. Uh, Alternate, they love their Bane Invoker combos. They love the Shadow Fiend towards the middle lane as well. But uh, Alternate, Meta Band, you know, Broodmother Doom, nothing too surprising there. Five seconds remaining. <laughs> Alliances turn to ban. <laughs> Radiant team ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. I only... Sorry, continue. Yeah, definitely. I only just realized that he's actually changed his name to Nuts. So, uh, no longer my Nuts, just Nuts. The Nuts. But, uh, alternate, take out the Tiny, and I wouldn't be surprised to see a Chaos Knight ban. Sometimes it's regarded as almost a waste of a ban, but against Alliance, who have run this time and time again, and Loda knows the hero inside out, the Chaos Knight wouldn't... Uh, it, it would be a pretty sound ban. Interesting, though, that uh, yeah, Alliance take out the Templar Assassin. Don't want that uh, team alternate team. hero running around, farming stacks, taking ancients and things like that. Now, alternate, they're kind of known for their invoker play from the safe lane. I'm wondering if they'll bring it out in game one here just to kind of, you know, do the whole shock and awe kind of thing. Because they've they've shown good success with it from the from the safe lane, going exhort invoker and going for this sort of wex exhort alacrity as soon as you can invoker to deal with uh, to deal with off laners. Because you can, like, invoker seen as a weak laning hero because usually you either go Wex, Quas, or Quas Exhort. And you don't open up the Alacrity until, you know, level 9, 10, 11 or something. But with the way that Supreme plays it, you you can demolish heroes. We've seen Invoker win against the Darkseer early on. Night Stalker. Alliances turn to pick. The 
Plaza. Radiant team pick. Yeah, definitely, but it looks like they're going to go for something a little more standard by uh, by their regards anyway. Now, Night Stalker, Tusk, and Dying. Three heroes who like running at you, three tanky-ass heroes, but this is heavily reliant on laning phase. You want to control the Anti-Mage's lane, make sure he gets a lot of farm. But what do they throw towards the middle lane? Because all three of the first picks could be off-laners, could be supports. Night Stalker could even go towards the mid. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Yeah, we saw we saw a ton of Sladar at uh, at MLG, but also before that a decent amount uh, during the Frankfurt qualifiers. And Loda, you know, Sladar's always been kind of one of his heroes. The brown boots into Blink, and then Treads Midas, which he used to love going for, and then Sladar plus Wisp. You can combo that up pretty nicely. They don't really have too many Wisp natural pairing heroes left out there, but I'm wondering if they go for Bulldog's hero first. He's been playing a, a ton of Nature's Prophet and stuff Sven like that. Spent. But uh, there we go, Loda, another one of his signature heroes, Sven, with a wisp, and they're leaving Bulldogs to last. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Alliances turn to bear. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. So final ban here for Alliance, you know, you can you can look at this and wonder if they need a final support hero or anything like that. You know, Winter Wyvern, Witch Doctor, things like that wouldn't be wouldn't be bad to ban out if you uh, if you assume Nutstalker mid, Tusk and Dying maybe off lane, and then AM needs the plus one to support him down on the safe lane. I think uh, Winter Wyvern could be decent, but yeah, Witch Doctor was the Radiant Team pick. Okay. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. And then what's left for Bulldog? Because Lone Druid, you know, maybe starts going back into things for him, but... Again... Invoker. Okay. Okay. I was I really wasn't expecting it. Like, you know, early on in the draft, I thought Tusk and Dying, maybe they go for the Invoker, maybe, but with a Night Stalker Anti-Mage taken up after that, it's kind of surprising. Ten seconds remaining. Five 
It's kind of weird though, because usually alternate they play the invoker in the space lane, and they just farm him up and get things running that way. So I wonder, anti-mage towards the mid, pull man shield first, pull them a couple of tangos, and then run around, causing havoc everywhere? Beastmaster! Okay. I was just thinking if... Uh, I think their options are open, because if you're expecting the Darkseer to get picked up by Alliance, which was a definite possibility there, then you know that you're going to do decently in the uh, in the 1v1, especially once you get up to like level 3, 4, with your, uh, with your alacrity up. But Beastmaster, good shout. Going to be able to get himself in there. But yeah, Exotic Deer going to take the Anti-Mage. And uh, Supreme over on the Invoker. Now Sasu... Their offlane player, Night Stalker, going to be up for him. Uh, Tuscan and Dying, like you mentioned before. The, the two early pickups going to be their supports. But Alliance, they've got heal, they've got sustain, they've got a ton of magical damage. But the physical damage they get is not too bad either. With the weave, the hits out from Sven, and they've got, they've got a ton of auras, you know? Lots of minus armor, the inner beast from Beastmaster. If they can catch Anti-Major Invoker, who, one of which is relatively squishy early on, and the other which doesn't have too much uh, escape or too many escape mechanisms unless he gets into like force and blink this invoker it's gonna, he's gonna have a decent time early but i worry about him later on you know orchid from Quop stuns out from sven and beastmaster and it's gonna come down a lot to atm's positioning in these team fights So if they get run out early on, actually trying to mitigate the damage that's thrown at them, yeah. Nisha up towards top with the Tusk, and they've got Sasu as well, you know. This uh, this Night Stalker plus Tusk. Tusk can just run himself around from top to mid, and it looks like they're going to place a ward relatively deep in here. Want to get one towards the pull spot, but five-man movement in. The Dark Observer Ward has already seen this Anti-Mage who's heading down towards the bottom lane. And if they can stun him up for long enough. What, what have they got? They've got one stun. Uh, it's not going to be enough to kill him off, is it? Thirty seconds to battle. Oh, are they gonna go the way that you said? Beastmaster's heading up towards top. And an aggro trial in here of Wisps Ven plus Dazzle. Well, top rune spot. <laughs> the contest begins. Ice shards will not block anyone out, but it'll hold Alliance in a position where they have to kind of fight into this with a shadow wave. The damage is pretty hefty down to Nisha, and S4. He's going to be forced to burn through his first shared tango with Sasu. Sasu, he runs back in to try and kill off S4, but these balls, they're slowing everyone down, and uh, Team Alternate. They've, uh, they've burnt through a lot of their HP as well. Nisha still battling it out with Beastmaster. Hang on a second. Not sure how that happens. As we're watching all the action up at top, actually a kill goes the way of Sven. Interesting. Undying has died again. He's walked into the middle of a shadow wave and even with a decay up, Loda just smacks into him. That's two deaths in very quick succession from the Undying, and I've, I've got to wonder, what what's he up to? Yeah. Oh, I'm not too sure, man. Not too sure. So Nisha makes his way down here with the Ice Shards. And uh, middle lane Supreme with his Quas into Cold Snap. S4 salves himself up and should be okay here. 
but that's... Top is the top is the interesting one. Night Stalker against Beastmaster. The boars, the axes. No, Night Stalker tanky, 650-ish HP with the five armor he starts off with. It's it's rough, you know. The boars sort of chip away a little bit, but it's nothing really noticeable, especially when you've got a mango up on you. That one HP regen is pretty hefty. Oh, um, you have to turn on your in-game mic, sorry. No, I, I forgot to tell you. We've, we've switched up the studios a little bit here. I'm in the, the big studio that's meant to have meant to have a caster with me in-house. But uh, the boys have just come back from MLG. That's my bad. Oh, Supreme, dead mid. Yep, the final right clicks in. And Nuts is going to survive on a tiny amount of HP. Sorry, I don't know how to do this on audio. Which mic do I turn uh, oh, team, or? team, yeah, team, and you turn on. It, it, it's really confusing. There's no like just turn on uh, open mic anymore. There's like yeah. three different buttons. That, which one do I press? <laughs> well, I hope that works. Good stuff. Oh, well, S4, he's been chased down a little bit here. Tusk is still level one though, and Supreme, two points in the class, not an exhort. Maybe with a cold snap, look for a kill onto S4, but he's going to be okay there. Up at top, Bulldog actually down at bottom lane. Loader, he's taking a bit of damage here. Exhausted deer, one point in the mana break, but they're going to run forward with a wisp. The tombstone's dropped, but it's not going to last long. Look at that, it lasts half a second. And Loader's got another stun in 10 seconds time, but I'm not sure he'll even need it. As they chase down the Undying, meanwhile, on the back end, Arcade's going to drop, but not before the Undying does, and Arcade survives with a Shadow Wave, the heals, the Tango through, and that Decay wearing off. Anti-Mage hides away in the trees. I'm gonna wait for his blink out. Yeah, this is a. Uh, I don't know, man. The, the the early deaths on undying, I I feel like they're totally on on call for, and it's it's having its impact on the lane. The support's getting a lot more exp than they should. Being able to get aggressive while the undying is down. Um, and in the meantime, what are they getting on the other parts of the map? Like this tusk has been hovering over bottom and top for a long time. He's does he's not even level two yet, so he can't snowball. I guess they're waiting on nighttime to make a play, but by then, Bulldog is already level 5, so he's going to be able to scout out or at least slow one of them with a with a boar. This is not going good right now. They're not getting the effective trades that they want to. And Supreme, you know, the player you mentioned about the Invoker, he's forced into a Wex Quas build. You know, for all the Exhort Wex build that we were hoping to see, if, if you're forced into a different build because of the lane matchup in the early game, you're already at a pretty... Pretty heavy loss, I would say. Oh, Bulldog. Tried to TP out there, knowing the Void was on cooldown, but Nisha was waiting in the wings. He'll throw the axes, but that's his death. Beastmaster drops to the Roman. And Tusk getting closer to level 3 now. But down at bottom lane, Loader has like infinite stuns. He's got 7 stick charges, he's got nuts just healing him up, regening that mana. And Exotic Deer, the anti-mage. 12 last hits, it's not bad. Blinks himself away, but this isn't the situation you want to be in. Oh, this tombstone. Is this pre-gold for Loader as he walks forward, walks back? He doesn't want to commit to this one. And they'll just, uh, they'll just focus down on this tier 1. They will get the Tombstone as they dive back. It, it, it dies so quickly, honestly. Yeah. You know, the, the how the Tombstone has to be placed now is that you have to force them to commit to it. And to the point where when they commit to it, even if it's so easy to kill, they die. And speaking of deaths, this Undying, is he going to fall again? It looks like it. No Tombstone, no Decay, no Soul Rip. The Shards will come in, but they're not going to block anybody out. Snowball to save him for a couple of seconds here. But they'll just take them back into the Wisp. And Lotus should be able to clear this one up with a stun. They heal out from Arke. They've killed off Undying and Exotic Deer, the Anti-Mage. He's in here with a Night Stalker chasing them down. They'll find the Void onto the Dazzle. But Nuts... Sonic Wave! S4 joins the fight and says, Thank you very much, I'll take a couple of kills. Double up for him. And Sasu cannot still find the kill onto the Wisp. Even with a Void, he won't be able to kill him off. Another hit in will... Oh no, not quite! He will secure it finally. But he'll give up his life for this. There's a stick charge, there's a blink. And S4 will jump himself forward and allow Loader to get himself up to a mega kill. 5-0-2 and two with 1,200 gold. What, what, is this, what is his net worth? 3,400 pretty much across the Sven and then 33 on the Quap. Yep, it'll be 4k pretty soon as long as uh, ATN doesn't send some heroes bottom with TPs because that tower is sitting at 200 HP and with his cleave he's going to push out the wave here. No. Oh, Alliance. 8-3 up. Beastmaster's having a decent time up at top lane, you know. It's it's not amazing. 
he's still a little bit behind the Night Stalker, but now he's against an anti-mage. Like you said, against melee heroes, the majority of the time, the Beastmaster just bullies them and bullies them. And with these double boards out, the fact that AM doesn't have a Ring of Health doesn't have any sustain, really, apart from the three tangos he's still got himself. Yeah. And he looks towards mid. Invoker being pinged out. They want to jump on this. ATM basically has a lot of early to easy to execute early game heroes for their lane, and as I say, that Invoker will probably no, he'll survive. He has the Ghost Walk available, but um, yeah, Espor is gonna go for another nuke. And <laughs> he kills him. Oh well, my Shadow gosh, Strike is killing him with kill the poison. Him, isn't it? Yeah, he's dead. I Double do poison. Oh, that Invoker has got to be so so upset with that. Up at top, Bulldog being chased. Exotic D. He wants this kill so badly with the shards. Still not securing it quite. Not get the anti mage into the thick of things and bring him down. But look at who's joined in. S4 is back oh, up here. Look nice at the kills. Snowball. Yeah, dodges with snowball. Back to the catapult. But there's no real escape from this one. Dazzle dies on the back end. Nisha loses his life for that. But Beastmaster plus Dazzle for the Invoker plus Tusk in the, in the grand scheme of things. While Loader is farming freely down the bottom lane. And with an Ogre Club, I'm not feeling the rushed BKB here. What do you think? Uh... Honestly, I think he's gonna go SNY. Yeah, he's going SNY. He's got the Sanj, he's probably gonna get Yasha after, and uh... So then, you can build him in multiple different ways, and I don't know what the most efficient build is every game. Eventually, he might want a PKB, but this is definitely not the game, because he's snowballing so hard, I don't think he needs it. Uh, I'm pretty sure I've seen uh, a couple of players in like FPL NA and maybe even in official games going, maybe not official, but Sanjay and Yasha Helm of Dominator Sven and just yeah. like padding out your stats, building yourself up, and it's really overtaken the Mom BKB build. The Mom BKB build is still probably superior. The Like, Mom is an item that makes Sven. Like, the attack speed is so good, ridiculously good, but the Helm of Dominator build, if you just assume that you're gonna get farm, and as they say that, Night Stalker gets picked off during the daytime. That's why you're a Night Stalker, not a Day Stalker. Uh, it, it's gonna, pardon me, there's some more kills at the bottom. Yeah, I'm just watching this back and forth. I keep going in and then going out. Nuts is trapped here with the cold snap zone. He should drop. Oh, Loader, retreat. Time to run, time to hide. Tornado EMP. Gonna drain a lot of his mana, but S4, he wants in again. He's got some, no, he doesn't have Sonic Wave, actually. They've got a stun, and there's no cooldown on Invoke here, so Supreme in a little bit of trouble as the Tombstone is still stacking up the zombies, and Arke will keep his team nice and healthy. But Team Ultimate, forced to bring wait, three or four heroes down here just to deal with the Tiny Wisp. Radiance top tower has fallen. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot of movement that they're forced to again, due to the laning phase, and... Loda's going in again. <laughs> of course he is. Kill the bomb, kills. He's got EMP. He can ghost walk if he wants to, but I think it might just be it. Oh, there we go. He gets invis. Shadow Strike's not going to chip him down this time. S4, not feeling the blink forward as it was on cooldown and uh, couldn't go in for that kill. But this is rough as, as the invoker. You know, you've got phase boots. No. Uh, nowhere near a four staff. You're, you're not going to go for the drums or anything like that. You'd love to have, you know, maybe an urn. We've seen that a couple of times just as a stopgap item to build yourself up a tiny bit. But the orchid, the item that you're aiming for is this class wax and oh god. Oh, I died for that Man, one, this huh? is just this is just a run over. There's 19 kills in this game in 9 minutes and 30 seconds. There's almost two kills a minute. This is like... Is alternate attack Russian? Uh, Polish. Oh, they're Polish, right? Oh. They're looking a lot like Russian Dota, though. <laughs> With all the kills going back and forth. Holy smokes. Run of them. Exactly. Like, but me. the thing is, like, Alliance are really fighting back. They know that yeah. Team Alternate have a lineup that runs at them. With Undying, Tusk, yeah. Night Stalker. During the nighttime, Honestly, it's though, like charge. Man, it's the... It's definitely the early game, though. You know, that, that double death on Undying. I, I have no idea what that was about. <sighs> You just give up two kills on Undying, you don't even have TP anymore, so your lane just starts at two minutes and you've already given up four or five hundred gold. You can't win a trial lane like that. I, I think that's it's way too big for this game to happen like that in the laning phase. Oh. I, I, I have no idea what he was doing. I just no. wasn't watching at all and you caught it and I'm just sitting there going... I, I didn't see the first kill. I, yeah. I, I didn't see it. I, yeah. The second one he TPs and he just walks straight back in again, but... Speaking of Orchids, the Invoker far from one, but Queen of Pain. First She's Oblivion very Staff close, and... yeah. I mean, this is what happens, right? You lose the trialing like that, your tier 2 dies at 10 minutes, and you're not facing a Broodmother. So something is seriously wrong here. And you have an Animage. There's no space to farm whatsoever on the map. Just getting zoned up by Quaps where he clicks. There's just no, no place on the map to be. Now, tier 1 tower at mid is dead, so you can't farm that. Tier 2 tower at top, you, you can't farm that because Night Stalker's there. And even if you push out the Night Stalker, where does the Night Stalker go? Daystalker does not farm neutrals, so hope is slowly being lost.
They're smoking up behind the Queen of Pain here, it looks like. Risky oh, this stuff. will be a big pick if they can get it. Oh, S4. It's night time. This is, uh, this is ballsy sticking around. And if you blink into the trees, there's Tornado EMP to catch you. So Blink TP, I think he's overstayed. He's definitely overstayed now. EMP, oh no! no! The Snowball will catch him, but S4, they're relocating back in with the Sonic Wave back. They're going to block him out with the shards, but Lotus charges forward with the Warcry. Stun on three, stun on two. They catch the AM and the Undying. The Tombstone's not going to do a damn thing as S4 jumps forward, finds one, but misses uphill. Sasu, you're in a ton of trouble, my friend. Back behind the tier three. Oh, and you know Bulldog's who joins in? Here. Bulldog is like, guys, I'm in the game as well. Yeah. This is this is a push. S4 has another bottle charge and some sticks as well. They got the sustain coming out of the dazzle and Wisp will surely make it to the fight after the pickup of the bounty room at the bottom. This is a Rax. They they can't hold this Rax push, I don't Oh, that is if they go for it, of course. Yeah, Loader pops the wall crying back in he goes. On to the tier three. Now Bulldog, he's got what, level one necro book? He's uh, looking pretty good, but Orchid is done for the Queen of Pain. So S4 S4 has a twelve and a half minute Orchid. With 7.5k net worth, yeah, at 12.30. That's a farmed Queen of Pain if I've ever seen one. I'm gonna Roshan now instead. They're just saying, okay, well, they're all up, it's night time. Let's just go Roshan. They can't fight us anyway. And they go. Man, oh man. So S and Y for Loader, Nuts has earned 1300. And Arcane, you know, the, the guy that rarely gets a, a good chunk of farm has Arcanes and a little bit of gold saved up himself. But Team Alternate, are we sure about this one? They're running towards the pit. Anti-Mage cannot fight. Anti-Mage is up at top farming, so this is, this is going to be a 4v5 at best. With the Tombstone level 3, maybe they can make this work, but there's so much sustain. There's Whiff, there's Dazzle. Dazzle starts up, though. They need to heal him. They need to keep him alive, but the Tornado EMP there will burn through the Dazzle and actually take him down. But Queen of Pain has blinked up onto high ground, stunned, slowed, silenced, and the heal comes in from Whiff, keeps him alive for now, and he's finished off. Oh. Wicked Six Streak stolen out there on Loader. He's left alone against a bunch of heroes and Team Alternate. They're actually winning this one out. They'll lose the Undying for it, but getting a couple of kills and a buyback from Quop, who TPs back down to kill off. Someone over to the side. Invoker, Ghostwalk ready. Runs himself away. And there's mm. no reveal just now. I won't be coming. Uh, my nuts should have relocated S4 there, and S4 would have just lived and trimmed on them entirely without the buyback. But I guess it's fine. Again, they they realized that they could take the fight at Roche, but that, that positioning was kind of poor on Alliance because they didn't have any vision whatsoever. Like, they didn't put a ward outside the pit either. So the smoke sort of caught them off guard, even though it shouldn't have. Regardless, the result is the same. Bulldog got the Aegis, and I, I don't think that's the ideal hero that they wanted it on, but everybody's so far, and they're just going to push high ground with it when Bulldog gets book 3. And he's he's got it, basically, yeah. He actually just got the tier 3 tower with a boar. And Necrobook. So, he's got... <laughs> the little minions taking down tier 3. Or oh, relocate top to the AM. He's dead. Oh, man. Oh, man. With the Orchid. It's just too simple for S4. So they've lost their tier 3 bot, they've bought an armlet over on the Night Stalker. And they're gonna go for another smoke here, it looks like. Yep, smoke on the courier. It's getting desperate for Team Alternate yeah, now. Yeah, this is, this is like, it, they're just gonna go for this, and then if they lose, I think they're just gonna call the GG. They don't really have a follow-up play. It's nighttime. If they can't make, make use of this time, the next 16 to 20 minutes, when it's daytime, they're not gonna get anything done. Boots of travel on the west, but it's not gonna help you in this situation. Tombstone's drop, Nuts is dead. With the right clicks out from the Invoker, Zombie slowing him down. And meanwhile, Arke and Loader, they're looking to maybe turn this one back around. Bulldog has Necro 3 and Roar available. And S4 was running himself down as well, but it's a minute and a half until Sonic Wave is back up. I'm wondering, do they just go charging down middle lane now? Uh, on the side of Alliance, I, I think they can. I'm not sure if they want to, but they certainly can. The Wisp has like four Orange Charges and bots, as you mentioned. So she's just going to come in and heal up this event. Nothing stopping them whatsoever. This AM is just, he's way, way, way too shy of his farm to be relevant in any of these fights. And so his alliance with Aegis is going to be fighting like 6v4, and with their farm advantage, you might as well call it like a 8v4 kind of thing. Oh, well, that's annoying. Loader has no mana remaining, but Wisp is going to bring himself back up to this one, so nuts. Yeah, tethers up and keeps Loader flowing, but 
This, this one's dying, he's got a buckler, nothing much else, he's a little bit of armor, he's level 6, 15, 16 minutes into this game. And if we look at levels overall, you know, the Dyer have a pretty massive advantage. They've got two heroes closing in on 11 in the Sven and Beastmaster. Actually, they're just hit level 10, but the gap isn't that big between 10 and 11, that's 600 XP difference. While Invoker, Orchid, it's still a pipe dream for him. Oh, they're actually, they're really backing off on this. Bulldog's up here trying to hunt the AM instead oh, of trying to close up trying to kill Sasu. It's not quite enough. Oh. The relocated bot nearly had him. But the relocate's going to come back. The MP. They bring Sven in. They're going to die for this. There's a weave, but no grave from Arke. And they lose nuts IO. Oh, do you see top? Bulldog was trying to do this the whole time. He was hunting the anti-mage. Oh, is it I think he got him. Oh, yeah, God. he got him, but... See, like, this is... I, I don't I don't know the, about this one. He, he's the one with the Aegis, and... The AM is already so shut down that they could just push, and the Wisp would have never had to die, and... They could just force base. I, I don't know why they're splitting up trying to look for... This anti-mage right now. I think it's pointless. He's got no farm, and... Yeah, really, like they could just is... push in middle and then walk down to bottom. And once they position up the hill, the Undying tomb, and the Undying is not low, high level enough to be impactful even with max tombstone. The Tusk just has shards, and Invoker has like no farm. They they should really have closed out the game right there. I feel like. Oh, Lance taking a little bit slow, a little bit steady. Hyperstone on uh, on loader, but following it up with a BKB. It looks like he's, he's he's worried. He's feeling feeling the heat from this Invoker EMP. It's very annoying to handle, honestly. And yeah, Arcade is kind of the same. Wisp is definitely the counter, though. You have you just have Wisp mana boots, and Arcade has one, so you'll just get all the mana back, basically. Their sustain is really good when they're together. The issue is that they weren't together because they were all off, all off uh, doing their own things. And I think the result is that this Aegis is going to be useless for Bulldog now because he's just playing this hunter role kind of thing where he's just looking for a kill. He has Roar now and I think they have a they have a boar in position too. So they're going to try to scout out the Invoker but he goes into Ghost, Ghost Walk so they won't be able to find him. Well, they see the Hawk. They know they're being watched. And Bulldog had full vision of the people coming across. And they're going to get this Observer Ward as well. Sentry's ready for Nisha. He's not going to be able to take that one out. Now, uh, Roshan respawns in a fair amount of time. Five and a half minutes or so. S4 shoving hard down at bottom lane. But Loda is farming enemy jungle. So they are definitely taking this super, super slow. Do yeah, you think they uh, wait for next Roshan even? I, I don't know. Um, I don't think they have to. But it's like, if you want to play it safe, the best thing always is to just wait for next Roshan when you have total map control. And they do have map control. The only issue is alternate attack can definitely do what they did earlier. Just smoke in with a darkness on Night Stalker. And that's always really effective at the pit because even if you might have superior fight at the pit, if you don't have vision, you can't do anything. And Night Stalker Darkness just happens to shut down all forms of vision very effectively. Oh, they're going, doing a good job of de-warding Nisha, taking out observers and sentries left and right. While Supreme, yeah, the Orchid. Oh, can they hunt down S4? They've got vision of him. They actually got, uh, got a little peek of him there with the sentry. Seeing the Invoker in that Ghost Walk. And the, you want to go hunting with the Invoker once you get this Orchid up. Just go hunt people down. Tornado, EMP, cold snap, kill them off, get the combo in there. And it's difficult. You know, heroes like Dazzle, okay, you can try and bring them down. But Sven, Queen of Pain even, are now building into a BKB. And the Beastmaster, who's pretty damn tanky, it's not as easy as you may think. Just going around killing people. And Wisp is always going to be paired up with someone. Yep. So maybe if you loop around with the rest of your team actually going in for the full frontal assault, you can find someone in the back. But you can't go and do like you're mentioning Bulldog's doing in that solo hunter role. Just finding pick-off after pick-off. Mm-hmm. They see the Night Stalker. He has Blink. Uh, I thought he was actually going to go right there, but they're they're shying away from it, saying it's darkness. We don't see any of their heroes. It'll be a turnaround. And I I think it's acceptable to have that kind of respect at this point. And they did give away a couple kills and could get pretty dirty. Well, Anti-Mage Claymore just needs 900 gold for his Battle Fury completed. But 20 minutes, it's getting later and later. Oh, Supreme, have you been spotted? The lights are on the hunt, and they, uh, I think they know they caught a sniff of him, but he's going to keep himself far from the creep wave, not give away his position. And the BKB is nearly done up for loader now, so once they've got that up and running, they can maybe start charging towards them. Hawks, boars, everything in the kitchen sink, given a vision here for Alliance. Anti-Mage just trying to find that one little spot to farm in. But there isn't anywhere to go. Alliance are grouping up at top, and they've got the relocate to come in as well, so if they see one hero, Anyone that can jump on. 
Well, it's alternate. They've done a good job the past, you know, four or five minutes or so, really after the Roche fight that they took, forcing Alliance into an uncomfortable situation. They've got control of their jungle again a little bit. You know, they can move out of their base, maybe even cross the river, because there's there's tier one standing. And that's gold waiting to be collected. Mm -hmm. It's unfortunate, though, that the Night Stalker had to show himself in the process. I think the reason why Alliance is on the other side of the map is because they saw Night Stalker at bottom and said, uh, we had the Wisp, uh, Wisp Sven there, and we don't really want to take a head on engagement with a relocate fight, where they have the initiations coming in from Bulldog and Quap and stuff like that, so... I, th I think they're just going to wait for the next roll, Shan. It really looks like they're going to. But... Yeah, looks like it. Undying? Oh, wow. He's, he's completed a mech. Where's, where's he got this gold from? All of a sudden, from having a buckler and brown boots, uh, fully completed mech. No arcanes, though, so mana sustain is going to be a little bit difficult. But team alternate. Oh, whoops. They're, they're dragging themselves back out of this hole they dug for themselves. You know, 8,000 net worth on your Night Stalker, heading quickly into the Aghanim Scepter, even without a Midas. And his armlet, you know, we've, uh, we've not seen great armlet toggling or anything like that, but it's, it's a decent enough, just small, you know, smallish item that helps you farm, helps you run around, and just gives you a little more teamfight capability. It's, it's <laughs> nothing amazing, but it's good sort of goal to effectiveness. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of it, personally. I can see it's affecting this as well. S4 actually is one of the one of the proponents of the armlet armlet Night Stalker back when he used to play it very frequently, and I think Universe does it too now because uh, they play from the offlane position. And as a three, you do need to do some sort of damage, and of course, armlet is very effective cheap damage. So it, it's that's the reasoning for the pickup, I think. Oh, SNY BKB load is ready. Boot to travel still on this wisp. Kind of interesting that he, uh, he hasn't really been able to progress too far from it. But with 1300 gold, I guess a glimmer cape, something along those lines, isn't uh, isn't too far away. While medallion for Ake, and they're just really starting the chokehold again. You know, they let slip for a couple of minutes while uh, while they were trying to push top and find picks on the AM or the Invoker. And I think Invoker did a great job making them go on this wild goose chase. You know, they they chased him around and around, and they just couldn't find him as he TP'd him himself away yeah yeah despite the despite the fact that his farm got halted for a bit he actually did make space for what you said so it was pretty decent they need a lot more of those to happen and i don't think alliance is going to give them that time though you see nighttime it's 3 a.m so in about one minute and a half time in game time it's going to be daytime and roshan is going to spawn within the next minute as well so that means with the next roshan alliance is probably going to push bottom lane where they don't have a tier three and nighttime is going to be over so the only thing they can rely on now is darkness and Night Stalker might have Axe by that point, which would be really good. So what would happen is at the base push, he has the Darkness and they have to win the fight. And I'm not sure, I'm, I'm not confident in their ability to win the fight against these BKBs. Newly picked up on Sven as well as the Quap and, and the Aegis, of course. Yeah, as long as Alliance can hit the spells, land their stuns, and Sonic Wave is going to be you know, Im imperative, obviously, as it always is, but getting it down onto the AM or the Invoker. You know, Tombstone, they're not too worried about. It can be a little bit annoying with a level 4 1 up now, but a couple of hits from the Dazzle, the Queen of Pain, the Wisp even, and then it drops pretty quickly. So, like you said, Roshan with a medallion. Quick and easy. And it's daytime, no yep, so the timing is perfect for them. They're gonna darkness, and again, the first darkness has to accomplish something when they push base. If they don't do anything about the dark, uh, if they don't do anything with the darkness, they're just gonna lose a second and third rack as well, and it's gonna be GG for sure. Uh, this AM still, he's not farmed, not nearly farmed enough to be an impact. The most important kills for Alliance right now are definitely the Tusk and the Invoker, because those are the only ones that can hold out the lanes by pushing them out and keeping them off the high ground. Again, with those heroes gone out of the picture, there's no way to defend high ground here. Yeah, bonus armor, the weave comes out. Loader is definitely a monster right now. And even with the glyph up, Team Alternate, if they use it, if they use it here, it's probably going to be a waste, because they're losing these racks anyway. So hold it for one of your other tier 3s, which is, uh, oh, Dire Destructive Sports 5. So is it EMP going to catch? No, it's not going to get anybody. Antimage pushing up at top, and the TP comes in from S4. Oh, wow. So he they actually put it. Away. Oh, did they relocate? Yeah, they relocated to try and catch the AM. I mean, that's okay, because he's going to go straight back, I assume. I don't think they should halt their push in any way, and here's the timing. The darkness hasn't popped. Well, Tombstone's down, it's stacking up, with Nuts getting the mana void on him. He's still alive, but Bulldog will get uh, thrown into the air. Loader. Loader. He's still got his BKB in with the walk right forward. He'll catch Supreme. Here comes a Scream Sonic Wave onto Nisha as well. And they'll clear him up. Nuts healed, graved, and Sasu with the armlet on. He'll do a good chunk of damage across the Nuts, but it's not going to be enough to finish him off. And Sasu is retreating out as Quop kills off the Tusk at the bottom with the DD rune.
And with no buyback on your Tusk, yeah, Invoker could be forced to actually pop his, but it's uh, it's going to be annoying. You've got your Glyph available, but Anti-Mage, this hero, Battle Fury, 1800 gold, Does you nothing. cannot fight. That's right. Yeah, so the two most important heroes are out of the picture, and this is what happens. Alliance just walks up to high ground. They don't, they don't care about anything else right now, because their creeps cannot die, which means their heroes cannot die. But this is the second Rax for sure. Well, 26 minutes in, two lanes of Rax, Team Alternate. All the ropes, definitely, and they could they could potentially go for a third here, but oh, looks like Alliance just going to back themselves up with no mana left on the Wisp and you know, half mana on your Dazzle. The sustain you get from these heroes is pretty vital in sustaining these pushes, so not going to risk anything. And of course, top lane is by their tier two. Bulldog gets himself up there with his Necro 3 and drums. So he got yeah. Necro 3 Blink drums. Interesting. He's just getting whatever item he can with the gold that he has right now to close out the game. But at the same time, I think I would have preferred a Vlad's pickup. I think Vlad's is really, really good, not only on Beastmaster, but for their team in general. It helps the Queen and Queen as well as the Sven sustain much better, and it gives them more armor. So, But Drum's not bad. The, again, the Drum pop charge on the 25 attack speed is really good right now. Okay, just go and end. Just go and uh, finish yeah, off yeah, the they're, Yeah, they're going to close out the game. I, I really didn't feel like they had to pour top for the AM. Um, I, I don't know, like he's completely useless, and if they see him pushing, split pushing, they're just gonna take everything else in the meantime. They cannot fight against the Aegis on the side oh, of the attack. Oh, Invoker. And jumps S4, Orchid, Shadow Strike, start things off, and Supreme, he's gonna be able to Ghost Walk here, most likely. Yep, healed up and Ghost Walks out with the shards, blocking a little bit onto Alliance. But, that's but this isn't gonna man. stop them. He's gonna, yep. like, Supreme has to go back and heal. He's gonna spend a good, you know, seven or eight seconds healing himself up and then run back. And also the fact that he has, you know, tornado EMP. Okay, they're, they're ready now. So he invokes them back up, but invoke is on cooldown. So cold snap, maybe gonna be a little bit de uh, delayed as the BKB from S4 raw. Nisha's caught and the mana's just gone. Even with that tornado EMP, they're gonna stop the supports on the back, but load up Sonic Wave from S4 and they're all dead. Invoker can buy back, but GG is called. And the anti mage is in the thick of things, but he's being demolished, can't even kill the Wisp. And Alliance take game number one. Yeah, I think this was like the prime example of a uh, Charlie gone wrong and losing the game as a result. Uh, that undying, the the two deaths, honestly, it, it really does like change how the entire game is played out. Because with an anti mage, they they have to win that lane or at least go even, and not lose the tower. So AM has a place to farm in the game. And as you can see, this AM, he he had absolutely no places, no space on this map to farm. Even though Alliance didn't have the the biggest amounts of catch between the Dazzle and the Wisp supports, what happens is when they roll over the lane like that, you you just don't have a lane to sit on. So I think Alliance just played to a strat very nicely, and they got a little lucky, I must say. Like again, the, the two deaths on Undying, that that's it yeah. just should not happen like that. Well, Sven basically cruised through that game. 11-0-7. A loader. Absolute beast on that hero. But yeah, game number one goes the way of Alliance. We'll be back in a little while, guys, with game number two. I, I can't remember if Danish TV are, uh, are covering game number two, so we might have to wait for their time slot, but I'll find out for you guys and see when we get game number two starting up. So yeah, a little break for now, but we might have a longer one for Danish TV to kick in.